بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه وما ولاه الحمد لله it's our pleasure and honor to start the day two talks of the summer annual conference of Masjid al-Furqan entitled Challenges of the West and to my right I have our Ustad, Ustad Abu Taymiyyah Hafizahullah wa ghaniyun an al-ta'rif but as you know the Sheikh studied intensively, intensively in Damaj in the early 2010 to 2015, mashallah, may Allah, may Allah reward him. And then he furthered his studies in the prestigious Islamic University, Al Jami' Al Islamiyya in Al Madina, where he graduated recently. May Allah Azza wa Jal bless him and reward him. He's someone that we've seen and we've had here and we've been honored to have and host at this masjid numerous times. Mashallah, he, he, he has various ijazat and studied under uh, a large number of mashayikh, including uh, Sheikh Sulaiman al Ruhayli. Sheikh uh, Abdul Razak al Badr, Sheikh Saad al Shatri, and many more. May Allah bless them and reward them all for blessing us and teaching our Sheikh and mashallah allowing us to benefit from the Sheikh. Today he's going to speak about an important topic, the topic of feminism, inshallah. So without further ado, tafadl Sheikh. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, wa usalli wa usallim ala al mab'uthi rahmatan al Alameen. بعثه الله شاهدا ومبشرا ونذيرا وداعيا الى الله باذنه وسراجا منيرا before i start the lecture لا بد ان نعاتب هذا الشيخ we have to take him to court for these introductions that he keeps on doing that which i really fear for is that our young brothers and sisters they will begin to glorify and venerate shahadat certificates when the asal is that one should focus more on acquiring beneficial knowledge, uplifting the ignorance from himself and then his family and so on and so forth. Right? وَلَا بِحَمْلِ شَهَادَاتٍ مُبَهْرَجَةٍ بِزُخْرُ فِي الْقَوْلِ مِنْ نَثْرٍ وَمُنْتَظِمِ بَلْ خَشْيَةُ اللَّهِ فِي سِرٍ وَفِي عَلَنِ فَعَلَمْ هِيَ الْعِلْمُ كُلُّ الْعِلْمِ فَالْتَزَمِ As the poet Hafid al-Hakimi mentions, the essence of knowledge is not having these decorated, glowing certificates, right? This is not the essence of knowledge or being able to quote lines of poetry. Rather, the essence of knowledge is فَعْلَمْ هِيَ الْعِلْمُ كُلُّ الْعِلْمِ فَالْتَزِمِ Right? خَشْيَةُ اللَّهِ فِي سِرٍ وَفِي عَلَنِ Having taqwa of Allah Azza wa Jal, fearing Him with knowledge. While you are in private, and also while you are in public. And this is what really matters. You can have all of the different shahadat you can think of. However, you could be dhalil, very lowly in the eyes of Allah Azza wa Jal. And I conclude with this one point. Ibn al-Qayyim rahmatullahi alayhi, he said the following, and I was telling Ustad Abu Rayyan this earlier, right, when we was having a debate about whether we should have, or we should go for the PhD or not. Huh? الرِّفْعَةُ لَا تَكُونُ بِمُجَرَّدِ الْعِلْمِ بَلْ بِاتِّبَاعِ الْحَقِّ وَالْعَمَلِ بِهِ Allah Azza wa Jal is not going to raise you for just having knowledge. Allah will not raise you for just having knowledge. SubhanAllah is talking about someone with knowledge. Only you will be raised بَلْ بِاتِّبَاعِ الْحَقِّ وَالْعَمَلِ بِهِ Rather, following the truth and acting upon it. And that's what really, really matters at the end of the day. No matter how many shahadat you have, and how many titles you have before your name? Naam. So may Allah Azza wa Jal forgive him. Where's the love, guys? He said, may Allah forgive me. Come on. Jazakallah <laughs> khair. My brothers and my sisters, inshallah ta'ala, today I only have 20 or so minutes to cover this very in-depth topic. That which relates to feminism. I don't think I've ever given a lecture that only lasted for 20 minutes. I'm known to go over time always, whether it is me teaching a book or giving a lecture. However, I will try my utmost best to summarize it as much as I can. That which I want to start this small lecture slash reminder with is that Islam is categorically for women's rights. And there is absolutely no doubt about that. Just as Islam is categorically for human rights. 
and likewise animal rights. Having said that, Islam categorically, my beloved brothers and sisters, stands for giving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala his rights. And the rights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala take precedence over all of the different rights that Islam came to establish. And denying any of the aforementioned realities is denying slash negating important aspects of the deen. Where one, my brothers and my sisters, would actually be flirting with kufr if one did any of the aforementioned things. Meaning if he was to deny it. All of these different rights that I mentioned is part of Islam. I think everybody can see that it's still the afternoon, sah? Or are we coming into the evening? It's still daylight, sah? Does anyone here deny that there is daylight outside? I don't think anybody in their right mind would say that it's nighttime. The rights of a woman, my beloved brothers and sisters, is as clear as daylight. It is pretty evident in the Quran, likewise in the Sunnah of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. However, due to ignorance and doubts that are spread and also the truth not being established, you will find that that which is min awdahil wadihat from the most clear of things becomes what? Blood. Does that make sense? And that is because either due to the people not turning to beneficial knowledge or the scholars, the mashayikh, the students of knowledge not establishing the truth, right? And also the spread of the enemies of Islam, right? Propagating and promoting all types of falsehood. These are all reasons as to why that which is false becomes so widespread. What we need to realize, my beloved brothers and sisters, if I sat here talking about the sun is out, the sun is out, the sun is out, you would find that extremely irritating. Right? Clarifying that which is already clear, you'll find extreme difficulty in doing so. And the rights of a woman in Islam is no different to that. Today, my brothers and my sisters, before I speak about some of the rights that Al-Islam came to establish for the woman, I want to take a little stroll in history. So you realize why we have some of these feminist movements emerging. Because you had first wave of feminism, then you also had second wave of feminism. And then now you have third. Today, I want to speak specifically about second wave feminism. And this is the type, my brothers and my sisters, that many of our Muslim sisters have become directly affected and polluted by. Right? Because when you look at first wave feminism, they had some reasonable demands that was premised on very reasonable, intellectual, coherent premises. Does that make sense? Some of the demands like women need to be educated. Women needing to be educated. They had every right to request that. This is something, my brothers and my sisters, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not prevent the woman from. Our sharia, in fact, encourages a woman to go and study her deen. Right? You have Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, which I will quickly point out. Right? Abu Musa al-Ash'ari radiallahu ta'ala anhu he said ma ashkala alayna ashab rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam hadithun qat fasa'alna Aishata illa wajadna indaha minhu ilma there was never a hadith that was problematic upon us the companions of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam except that when we asked Aisha, we found that she had some knowledge concerning this hadith. Even Masruq, he said, 
I saw the scholars from the major companions of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam asking her about the obligatory matters of the religion. The scholars of the companions, subhanAllah, they go to Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha in order to seek clarification on issues of the religion. Atai ibn Abi Rabah, the black mufti of Mecca, he said Aisha was from the most knowledgeable people and generally had the best viewpoints. So Islam, brothers and sisters, did not come to prevent the woman from seeking sacred Islamic knowledge. But we will come on to all of that inshallah ta'ala. So the first wave of feminism, what we need to understand is, they had some reasonable grounds on what they were actually what? Requesting and wanted. I won't say that everything that they said was always correct. However, there was aspects that they had a valid point on. Then you have second wave feminism. The narrative that is pushed by these feminists, my brothers and my sisters, is that women are subjugated, oppressed at all times by men. They are always at the bottom. This is the narrative that is being pushed, that is creeping into our Muslim women. Whether they realize it or not, you see them uttering certain statements that is extremely, extremely problematic. Right? So let's try to understand exactly as to why these movements came about. Right? And one thing I will say clearly and explicitly that women were oppressed and Islam condemns that. Nobody denies that women, historically speaking, Right? We're oppressed. And these are some examples. For example, a woman in the eyes of the philosophers, right? the Greeks, they considered her poisonous from the doings of the shaitan, from the doings of the devil. Min amal shaitan. Women in the eyes of the Romans, my brothers and my sisters, right, was a type of species that is so lowly, they would differ amongst themselves. And does she have a soul or not? This is amongst the Romans. Does she have a soul or not? Right? In the eyes of the Chinese, she would be inherited just as you inherit goods and objects. A woman in the eyes of the Hindus, my beloved brothers and sisters, is that the moment a husband dies, the wife is burnt right after his death. Let's speak about how a woman was perceived by the Christians. Right? In a council that was set up, 586 Miladi, right? 586 Miladi. There was a conference that was set up by French Christians. You know what the main talking points of this conference was? Can a woman be considered human or not? Does she have a soul? Does she not have a soul? Is she an animal? Is she not? This is what they're what? Debating and discussing amongst themselves. Some said that she has a human soul that is in the body of an animal. I'm just quoting. And she was only created to serve her husband and she has no other purpose. So now, of course, when you have ignorance so widespread, the truth has diminished, you will always find a knee-jerk reaction. And that's exactly what happened. These waves started coming about. First wave, second wave, and now you have the third wave, right? And as we mentioned time and time again, my brothers and my sisters, we need to understand this very, very important point. And every single individual here has a role to play in this. Ibn al-Qayyim, Bid'ah. 
When the sunnah dies down, you will find the opposite taking a stronghold. Does that make sense? No one's propagating the sunnah anymore. You will see the opposite taking over and becoming widespread. And that's with everything when you think about it. The haqq is not being established. That which is the truth has become dry on the tongues of the leading figures of society. You will see the opposite taking a stronghold. Likewise now, when you look at the whole LGBTQ stuff, would you agree, my brothers and my sisters, that it has picked up so much simply because you didn't have the opposite propagating that which is correct. We are made to feel that we must have coalitions or that you have to be on your toes. Right? You have to either be on your toes, either you are forced to have coalitions on the back foot and so on and so forth. And I'm not here saying that we must entice hatred, right, harassment or violence towards any minority group. I'm just talking about speaking the truth and establishing that which is correct. Al-Mara'atu عند Yahud, a woman in the eyes of the Jews, my brothers and my sisters, she used to be sold just like you would sell cheap goods. Subhanallah. This is how the woman was tr treated. Is this something that we as Muslims condemn without a shadow of a doubt? Do we acknowledge that a woman was oppressed without a shadow of a doubt? Walidalik, you find that when Al Islam came to rectify the problems in society, one of the things that Al Islam established was giving the woman her due right. Honoring the woman, my brothers and my sisters. And some examples of how the woman was honored is that prior to Al-Islam, she would never inherit. Did you know that? She would be deprived of the inheritance. Al-Islam came and he granted the woman the inheritance. Does that make sense? You have feminists coming out today, right? Because of everything that I've seen happening throughout history. And that's something that we all acknowledge to be incorrect, right? This wave of feminism came about in order to empower women. Does that make sense? This movement is there to empower women. So they came with a whole different ideology. What happened? This ideology was taken and then used to judge Al-Islam. طيب. This ideology is saying X, Y, and Z. Al-Islam says this and that. طيب. That means that Islam is oppressive. Islam is ظالم. Right? غاشم. Because of this ideology that came about which was then used to measure what is valid in Islam and what is not? Does that make sense, my brothers and my sisters? You have feminists coming out saying, the inheritance law is what? Oppressive. Wallahi, my brothers and my sisters, this is actually, right? A statement that can take you out of the fold of Islam. A very, very dangerous statement that one may utter. To say that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala judged is oppressive. Did you know, my brothers and my sisters, that uh, we can maybe say that there are four scenarios when it comes to inheritance. When you look at it from the angle of who inherits more, male or female, the first category, my brothers and my sisters, is a man inheriting more than a woman. The second is that they inherit equally. Did you guys know that? It gets even better for the woman. Third category is where the woman is inheriting more than the man. And I've got approximately 10 examples written, written down. Who can give me a scenario? Let's see who is an inheritance expert here. Who can give me a scenario where a female takes more than the man? 
اه يا مشايخ كيف لث لث شيخ خذ السطر الاول من الايه ولكم نصف ما ترك ازواجكم ان لم يكن لهن ولد فان كان لهن ولد فلكم الربع a wife passes away and she leaves behind a husband and a daughter how much does the husband get the husband takes a quarter of what has been left behind imagine now the wife she was mashallah pretty wealthy she had plenty full of money right and she left behind a million how much does the husband get 250 takes a quarter how much left 750,000 inheritance law states that فَإِنْ كَانَتْ وَاحِدَةً فَلَهَا النصف. If the child is a female and she's by herself, she takes a half. So how much does she get? 500,000, which is half of a million. Tell you what happens to the remainder. Who does it go to? The husband or the daughter? لا. يُرَدُّ عَلَى البنت. So she ends up what? Walking away with three quarters of a million. Islam is zalim, huh? It's oppressive. So you have what? Ignorant sisters who haven't studied the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Running with whatever they have been fed and polluted with. They just came across that part. Ratio of two to one. Khalas. This is oppressive. I, in today's day and age, work. I have to pay the bills. Who said you have to pay the bills? This whole mentality of 50-50, wallahi, it's so muhrij. I've seen it happen, right? Husband, he takes his wife out to lunch, right? They're sitting. As soon as they finish, the bill is brought. Everyone's taking out their money. Huh? The wife is taking out half of the money and the man is taking out the other half of the money. Where did this come from? None other than the Westerners who have set us standards that we are not in need of. From that which Al-Islam came with my brothers and my sisters is honoring the woman in such a way that even if she's a multi-billionaire, I never said millionaire, I said billionaire. Does she have to contribute a single penny to the bills of the house? La wallah. Whose job is that? That is the husband's job. She wants to help out, no problem. Jazakillahu khaira. May Allah Azza wa Jal reward you with good. Does that make sense? Does she have to contribute a single penny? No, she doesn't. And this is a card that I always use with non-Muslim women who become extremely amazed and the fact that a wife doesn't have to contribute a single penny. Does that make sense? Naam. She doesn't have to contribute to the expense. Even the clothes that she wears. The clothes that she wears. Who has to pay for that? Huh? The husband has to pay for it. Her home. Who has to pay for it? Bil ma'roof, of course, right? It has to be the man. She wants to help out, no problem, that's absolutely excellent. But he cannot enforce her to start paying or enforce upon her to start paying the bills. Also, my brothers and my sisters, Al-Islam instructed and commanded that you are good to your female folk. Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, Man kana law ukhtani aw ibnatan fa'ahsana ilayhima ma sahibatah فَأَحْسَنَ إِلَيْهِمَا مَا صَحِبَتَاهِ كُنْتُ أَنَا وَهُوَ فِي الْجَنَّةِ كَهَاتَيْنِ الله هو أكبر Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم said Whoever has two daughters or two sisters and he keeps good company with them me and him will be like this in the jannah me and him will be like this in the jannah مَقَرَنَ بَيْنَ أُصْبُعِي in another hadith, my brothers and my sisters, we have that the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, مَنْ عَالَ بْنَتَيْنِ أَوْ ثَلَاثَ بَنَاتِ 
Whoever takes good care of two daughters or three. أو أختين أو ثلاث. Right? Or two sisters or three. حتى يمتنا وفي رواية يبنا. All the way up until they die. Or they reach the age of puberty. أو يموت عنهن or all the way up until he dies. كنت أنا وهو كهاتين. وأشار بإسبعيه السبابة والوسطى. Me and him will, like, will be like this in Al-Jannah. Like this. And he connected these two fingers together. The last. خطبة الوداع. أو حجة الوداع. The fair will hajj. Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Right. Is giving the sermon. On the greatest day of the year. The day of Arafah. One of the points that he emphasizes is being good to your women. Istawsu bin nisa'i khayra. Subhanallah. Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is dying. And he says, As-salatu as-salah wa ma malakat aymanukum. The prayer, the prayer. And also what your right hand possesses. Islam came to oppress the woman, huh? Mm. Also, my brothers and my sisters, give me a religion that instructs you to honor the mother more than Islam. Give me that religion, brothers and sisters. The rights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have been connected with the rights of who? The rights of your mother. قُلْ تَعَالُوا أَدْلُوا مَا حَرَّمَ رَبُّكُمْ عَلَيْكُمْ أَنْ لَا تُشْرِكُوا بِهِ شَيْئًا وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا Being good to your parents. Right? Also in Surah Al-Isra وَقَضَى رَبُّكَ أَنْ لَا تَعْبُدُوا إِلَّا إِيَّا وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا Allahu Akbar. Also in Surah An-Nisa وَعْبُدُوا اللَّهَ وَلَا تُشْرِكُوا بِهِ شَيْئًا وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا Not committing shirk, worshipping Allah Azza wa Jal and also your parents. And we know, right, who is more deserving of your good conduct. When you look at the father and the mother, it is the mother. That was mentioned three times. Right? Al-Islam, my brothers and my sisters, has made it easy upon the woman. When it comes to Salatul Jama'ah, would we agree, my brothers and my sisters, coming to the Jama'ah every single day, five times a day, can be a little bit difficult. Right? It can be a little bit difficult on the nafs, right? The woman can just stay at home, looking after her children, right? Likewise, my brothers and my sisters, rahmatan biha, as a mercy upon her, she doesn't have to go out to fight. Right? A war breaks out, she can stay at home. Just look after her life and also her children. While the man, and we know this is not an easy thing, to go out and put your body on the line. You got high value men and high value women discussing as to whether the man should go and answer the door when he re hears a ring at three o'clock in the morning. No, she needs to go. No, he needs to go. She needs to go. He needs to go. This is what is being debated now on social media. You got a guy coming out, no way am I going to what? Put my life on the, on the line. She can go herself. Shuv al habal hada. When you look at the ibadat, my brothers and my sisters, would you agree when it comes to al muamalat, transactions, men and women are both equal? They're equal, right? Likewise, when it comes to the ibadat, al badaniya, like al salat, and al siyam, they're likewise equal, except that there are a few differences in order to make it easier upon the woman. Why don't we look at it with these lens? A woman's on her menses. We know that she tends to be a lot more emotional when she is on her menses. And by the way, I'm not the one that said that. One of the leading feminist activists, have you guys heard of Simone de Beauvoir? Simone de Beauvoir, one of the leading female activists, she said the following, and I quote, 
Imagine I said that, I'd probably get cancelled, right? Women are a lot more emotional, they cry. Men will beat women in a fight and they are the stronger. There are physiological and biological differences, but despite all of that, we should be treated the same. There's a lot more that I want to speak about, my brothers and my sisters. Let's quickly, inshallah ta'ala, touch on the two pillars that feminism stands on. Because I just seen the next speaker walk in, that means get a move on. Huh? The two pillars that feminism stands on, number one, brothers and sisters, equal rights. And number two, being in opposition to the patriarchy system, where you have a man who's in charge. No, 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 we're going to be equal. Unaccepting of that. And by the way, that's not just something that is exclusive to Islam. Likewise in Christianity, when you go back to the te text, Judaism, Buddhism, right? All of these different religions, brothers and sisters, they all advocate for the patriarchy system. Maybe, inshallah, that's something I will speak about another time. However, now, that which relates to equal rights, and I will conclude with it. I can hear the door cracking again. Huh? Brothers and sisters, I want to ask you guys a question. Sheikh, I'm going to wrap up right now. Yeah? Earlier, I spoke about how this feminist movement was a knee-jerk reaction to oppression that was taking place, which we as Muslims condemn. Does that make sense? Taib. They began to push a particular narrative, which was then placed alongside Al-Islam. We have this ideology that has now emerged. Now let's look at Al-Islam. There's no equal rights in inheritance, either. It is oppressive. Taib, when it comes to the roles, because there's no he it's oppressive. Wahakada wahalumma jamra. Does that make sense? Taib. Brothers and sisters, who even said that equal rights is actually fair and just? Who said that this is justice? Islam did not come to establish equal rights. Islam came to establish justice. Does that make sense? And there is hikmah, and there is wisdom behind every single commandment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Think about it for a moment, my brothers and my sisters. Look at what society is doing to a woman. We know that a woman comprises of three things. A soul, intellect, and also a body. Isn't that so? She has a soul, she has an intellect, and she also has a body. Society, my brothers and my sisters, what is he exactly doing? It is taking advantage of a body without anything else. Agreed? You look at the billboards. Do you agree that they've used her body as a marketing tool? There might be toothpaste that is being sold and then you have a half-naked woman. Why? Look how they have objectified her. Sister, why do you fail to understand that the society, the, that society does not hold your best interest? My brothers and my sisters, have you guys heard of the Rockefeller family? For those who don't know who this family is, the Rockefeller family is an American industrial, political and banking family that owns one of the world's largest fortunes. One of the members of this family, David Rockefeller, said the following, and I quote, We started and funded the women's movement so we could tax both sexes. That way, we could put women to work and take their children to control. You know what the sad reality is? I quote David Rockefeller, a gal, a kafir. Everybody becomes amazed, especially our sisters. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told you in the Quran, وَقَرْنَ فِي بُيُوتِ كُنَّا Abide yourselves in your homes. And do not reveal yourself or display yourselves. وَلَا تَبَرَّجْنَا تَبَرُّجَ الْجَاهِلِيَةِ الْأُولَى Allah Azza wa Jal told you and whatever He tells you, it's in your own best interest. 
Abdullah ibn Sa'ud radiyallahu ta'ala anhu Yawza said Ma ta'abbalati allaha imra'atun Bimithli taqwa Allah Wa juluziya fi baytiha A woman hasn't worshipped Allah azza wa jal In anything more greater than Her coming with a taqwa And also what? Staying inside of her house Wallahi it's an honor For you to be bringing out the next generation of ulama From your home You study and then you teach But they've demonized such act I even came across a comment not so long ago, right? Why are you guys turning us into breathing machines of kids? We are not machines that just breathes. Can you see how it's been demonized? What is so bad about that? Your salvation is in you doing so. So my brothers and my sisters, and I conclude this last point. Al-Musawa, equal rights, isn't actually justice, Right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has honored the women in so many different ways. Look at how they are treating their women. You look at a musician or a singer, should I say, right? When she is at the peak of her career and her attractiveness, everybody's flocking around her. Sah? Interviews, you get called to this gig, this event. Everybody what? Is focusing on her. That's what she is seen as. Someone who's able to entertain men. Isn't that so? طيب. What happens after she grows old? 30 years of age. Uh, forget about 30. Huh? Maybe by the age of 28, she's considered expired by society. 29, 30. Forget about 40. 30 years of her life might go by and no one gives two hoots about her. Why do you have, I'll give you guys an example of Umm Sa'd, I believe her name was, that passed away recently, I think she was in her 80s. She was a Qari'ah. Blind, at the age of 80, men and women are traveling out to her in order to read the Quran on her. She had the ijazat in the Qira'at al sab and also what? Sorry, Qira'at al-Asha, al-Sughra wa al-Kubra, or al-Kubri. Huh? She had all of the ijazat. And men are going to her, honoring her. Subhanallah. However, that singer, when she passes away, maybe what? She trends for a couple of hours. And she might not even trend on Twitter. And then by the next day, everybody's forgotten about her. While this woman, she remained in her house. Mu'azzaza mukarrama. Allah Azza wa honored her. That she could what? Benefit so many people. Wallahi brothers and sisters, there's so much that I wanted to talk about and 25 minutes or 30 minutes doesn't give it justice. Maybe inshallah one time we will do a lecture that is so much more structured. This was just ala tariq min huna min hunak Wallahi Shaykh, Shaykh, Shaykh is known to, to say that Shaykh Allah huh? yifadak Shaykh La la Allah yifadak Allah yifadak There's so much more that we wanted to mention but uh, maybe inshallah the next pillar Aslani Azimani Inda Al Feminism. You know how you have Usul al Thalatha, right? Usul al Thalatha, right? Here there's Aslani Azimani Inda Al Feminism. We'll speak about the patriarchy system inshallah ta'ala. Another time that which relates to Arijal Qawamun Al Nisa, which is a very, very sensitive issue. Naam. Barakallah fikum wa ahsanallahu ilaykum. And uh, I'll see you guys inshallah ta'ala after Maghrib. I'm really looking forward to that. Sheikh Abu Sama and uh, Fadilat al-Shaykh Muhammad Ali will be doing a panel discussion on uh, the challenges of the West inshallah. Allah yafadak ya Shaykh. Jazakum Allah khairan Shaykhana wa yasadhuna abu taymiya. For coming down, it's always a pleasure having you in Manchester. This is your second home. And he knows that very well. well first, alhamd. the first home. Huh? <laughs> 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 no longer in his. Well, Allah 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 Allah